Welcome to Jeans Reviews, where I basically do whatever the hell I want. Hello, everybody. I'm going to do something different today instead of all the ghost videos I usually do. Don't worry, we'll get back to them. But uh, sometimes I just like to feel hopeful, you know, that there isn't all these poltergeists throwing stuff around and stuff like that. And we're going to do one today from Most Amazing Top 10 called Top 10 Real People Who Saw God. Now, a lot of people probably look at videos like this and think these people are crazy, but I don't. I believe in it. So let's check this out. Whether being given messages, experiencing the beauty of the afterlife, or being terrified right back into this world, these people all have one thing in common, and that is that they claim to have seen God. Let's dive right into these stories as we cover the top 10 real people who saw God. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Eben Alexander. Eben is a Harvard neurosurgeon, and for much of his life, he was skeptical about religion and God. That all changed in 2012, however, when, after a near-death experience, he returned talking about how he had visited heaven. He yep. explains his story saying that he was surrounded by butterflies and was told by a woman that he had nothing to fear at all while he was there in heaven. Aside from the butterflies in this interaction, he also remembers a bunch of transparent beings, particularly birds. These birds were flying high above him, but one thing about them really stuck with him. He said, quote, again, thinking about it later, it occurred to me that the joy of these creatures as they soared along was such that they had to make this noise, that if the joy didn't come out of them this way, then they simply would not otherwise be able to contain it. Wow. In our number nine spot today, we have four. I've noticed a lot of like scientists and stuff like that don't believe. They they try and um, justify it all, make try and make sense of it all. They can't, they have no concept of faith or anything like that. It's all scientific, especially and I'm going to name him Neil deGrasse Tyson. I really don't care for that guy. I'm not going to say I hate anyone because you're not supposed to hate anybody. But I really don't like Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's like he tries to turn people away from faith. And he's just too pompous and cocky and arrogant. Thinks he knows everything. Science can't possibly explain everything. There's some stuff we just don't know. Let's continue. 45 years. In 1943, Dr. George Ritchie died of pneumonia, but after nine long minutes, he came back and was sure to tell the tale of what happened while he was gone. He went on to write a book called Return from Tomorrow and My Life After Dying. He recounts a lot of stuff in this book from an out-of-body experience to meeting people, but the last thing he remembered was meeting someone who he calls God. He explains that God left him a mental message that told him, quote, it is left to humanity which direction they shall choose. I came to the this planet to show Free you will. through the life I led how to love. Without our father, you can do nothing. Neither could I. I showed you this. You have 45 years. When he came back to his body, he explained that his throat was on fire and that he felt weight on his chest that was crushing to him. I'm not exactly sure what this message was supposed to mean. I mean, mostly the whole 45 years thing. Yeah. Dr. Ritchie passed away in 2007, which was almost 64 years after his near-death experience. But whatever this message was intended to mean, that was probably the coolest and most terrifying thing in the world. Huh. In our number eight spot today, we have the Gates of Hell. Veronica oh. Ulrich Barthel was 22 was years old happy. in 1981, and that is when she was struck by lightning while she was driving. When she got struck by lightning, she began having an out-of-body experience. She said she could see herself holding the steering wheel with burned hands, which sounds absolutely terrifying. She then said she went on a journey through a tunnel, which led her to be standing in front of a gate that read, welcome to hell. Yeah, okay, I thought the burned hands were bad, but this might be worse. She then explains that she was brought to a waiting room, which sounds a lot like hell, yeah. and that she could see people suffering in torment. She then said that she met someone who she presumed to be Jesus or God, and he sent her back to her body. When she came back into this physical world, apparently all she could do was scream, I was 
was dead and in hell over and over and over again. Wow. This is definitely one of the stories on this list that is significantly more terrifying yeah. than blissful. In our number seven spot today, we have Laura. This story comes from a woman named Laura who had a near-death experience after a car accident in 1986. She said that while she was dead, she found herself in front of both God and Jesus. She said, quote, Jesus asked me if I wanted to see where I was. I nodded, yes. He showed me that he, God, was in front of me and wearing a white robe sitting on a tall white chair. I was at his feet kneeling with the back of my thighs on my calves in an almost sitting position. I had my hands covering my face and was crying. Laura explained that God was kind of hidden by a round cloud, but she could definitely see parts of him. Apparently, then Jesus said he needed to ask God if she could return to earth, after which Jesus was very excited by him saying yes. The next thing Laura remembers is waking up in the hospital back on earth. In our number six spot today, we have Valu. This story comes from a man named Valu. Many years ago, Valu was at Nalamudi Punjalai in Valpuri when he had his encounter with his god called Lord Maruga. While this viewpoint is absolutely stunning, it didn't become famous and popular until after Valu's experience. He explains that God arrived in human form through a bolt of lightning. He also explains that God was very handsome, which I love. This experience very obviously shaped Valu as he has been going back to the same spot every day since that day to try and meet God again. Wow. Valu actually lives out in this area now and takes care of it as if it is a temple. And he is also a farmer who survives off of the different fruit, vegetables, and herbs. He also says that the wild animals don't bother him or try to hurt him at all. If you ever travel to the area, That's it is amazing. very, very likely that you will hear Valu with his chants as he shouts to the sky in prayer. In our number five spot today, we have Crystal McVeigh. Crystal McVeigh passed away for a short time in 2009 after she experienced complications with pancreatitis. She says that when she woke up, she was in heaven and was greeted by two angels along with God himself. This is what Crystal had to say about this experience, quote, What I saw and felt was just this beautiful, radiant, glowing light. That's the only word I can even think to describe it. But I was very aware that I was in front of the presence of the one true God. I'm a Christian. I believe it was the presence of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. After this, she was posed yeah. with the question of whether or not she wanted to stay in heaven or if she wanted to return to her mother on earth. Crystal actually chose to stay in heaven, but as she got closer to the gates, she said that God showed her a vision of a little girl playing, and this is when she knew that it was his way of telling her that she needed to go back to earth so that she could raise her family. In our number four spot today, we... Okay, I'm going to pause it for a second there just because that's kind of what happened to my dad. Well, kind of. He actually, when he had his first heart surgery, it probably would have been like 1996 or 1997, somewhere around there. He came through the heart surgery all well and good, but then he had uh, something ruptured in his stomach. I don't know exactly what it was, but he ended up with pancreatitis and he ended up with peritonitis also. And they had to cut him open and the stomach surgery he told me afterwards was way worse than the heart surgery and he thought the heart surgery was bad or after that but he had to go through the stomach surgery and what, what was weird about it was after it was all over with because they did lose him on the table but they was able to bring him back he asked us in the waiting room if we had seen the video and we were like what video and he said the video of the surgery he says he saw the video and he said he could see himself laying there on the table and all these doctors and nurses just running around him like crazy, just going nuts. And so basically he, he was, what I take from it is he was above himself. And he didn't know how to process that. He thought that he had seen a video of it, but he was watching the whole thing from above, probably at the moment that. He left his body, but then he was back. And when he told us this, then he started to cry. We were in intensive care with him when he was telling us this. He started to cry, and my dad wasn't one to cry. But he started to cry, and he said that um, he had seen my grandmother, his mother. And she told him he couldn't stay, and that he had to come back. And he he wanted to stay with her. But um, I, I believe in all this stuff. So sorry to go on such a long tangent and everything. I just thought that would be interesting to share. But 
he was a lot different after that too. He was a lot more chill because growing up when I was a kid and everything, I remember him, he was always loving to us and everything, but he would get in fights and different things like that and go out drinking and everything. And he was just a lot more chill after all that happened. But let's continue. We have Rhonda Brown. This story actually comes from a most amazing top 10 viewer who goes by the name of Rhonda Brown. Rhonda left a comment on one of her videos about her experience seeing God, and this seems like a perfectly lovely time to share it with everyone. She wrote, quote, I had an experience when I was pregnant with my daughter. I had internal bleeding and had emergency surgery. I felt myself rising to the ceiling. I went through the ceiling and found myself in a beautiful place. The colors were so bright it hurt my eyes, and it was every color ever. I was seeing at once. Wow. Jesus told me I had the choice. My daughter and I could stay or go back. He told me if we stayed, it's fine, but if I chose to go back, my daughter would be fine. He let me see my family in the waiting room crying. I couldn't do this to them, so I came back. My daughter is 14 now and is such a loving child. Rhonda, what a wild story. Having That's to go cool. through that kind of a terrifying experience while pregnant and then having to make that kind of a choice, that must have been a very tumultuous time for all. Thank you, Rhonda, for sharing your story with us. We appreciate you. She has something to look forward today, to. Dream. This Reddit story comes from someone who really knows how to paint quite a vivid picture. This person actually experienced their close call with death after being impaled with a fillet knife, which really is a story that I wish I could Ew. hear more about. They go on to write, quote, I had tried to crawl up from my basement to phone 911, but I was so weak and every time I moved, I started bleeding harder. I remember passing out and having the sensation like I was leaving a dark room and moving outside into the sun. I stopped panicking and this feeling of pure contentment settled over me. I was floating over a garden where all of the plants were giving off light and I could see a huge amorphous shape above me that was made up of every color in existence, including colors I have never seen before and couldn't I've possibly heard that. describe. I've heard that. The shape seemed familiar like I was a part know. of it and it was beckoning to me and filling me with pure ecstasy and understanding as I looked at it. Then, a man who looked an awful lot like Dream from the Sandman comics, which I was obsessed with at the time, walked over to me through the garden and told me that I couldn't go home yet, that it wasn't time. I started weeping, but I was filled with this feeling of understanding, like I knew that I had to go back despite not wanting to. The man had tears streaming down his face and he took my hand and led me back to my body, which was in an ambulance. My older brother had found me and called 911. This sounds like while having one of the most horrific experiences, this person was having one of the most peaceful and tranquil yes. moments of their life. And again, it really is interesting what these kinds of experiences can forward. do to our bodies and our on. brains. In our number two spot today, we have Don Piper. Don is a man who experienced death after a car accident in 2008. After making a recovery, Don was interviewed about his experience, not only because having an NDE like that is already an insane story, but because of what Don says he experienced while on the other side. He said that he went to heaven and that outside of the gates, he was greeted by friends and family who he says hadn't aged at all. It wasn't until he started to go up to the gates in order to walk through that he ended up waking in his own body on earth. About the ordeal, he said, quote, this is a very remarkable, unique situation. He went on to say, quote, I saw things there that I wouldn't have expected to see if I was having a dream. I saw people there that I didn't expect to see. There were a lot of yeah. things about my experience that convinced me in no uncertain terms that this is reality and this is fleeting. This is passing. I can't wait to go back there. I didn't want to come back here. A That's lot of them say that. <laughs> In our number one spot today, we have Colton Burpo. Colton has a story so popular that it's actually been turned into a movie called Heaven is for Real. Basically, Colton's experience starts out while he was battling an illness. I think my mom and sister saw that movie. He was extremely sick and it. was battling to stay alive, and during this time, he is said to have had an experience in heaven. While here, he says that he not only met, but spoke with Jesus during his visit. While I'm sure they had much to talk about, one of the things they spoke about was Colton's sister, who had passed away before he had a chance to meet her. When Colton returned to his body on earth, he was sure to share what he had experienced, which many people thought was absolutely remarkable. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've well, that last one was cool, too, that someone like Neil deGrasse Tyson would say, oh, it was, he was hallucinating in his mind when that happened and try and write it off like that. But I believe it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Now... Let's tell a joke. It's time for a joke to brighten your day. 
You know, sometimes I sit on the floor with my knees up, put my arms around my knees, lean forward. That's just how I roll. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hashtag Mean Gene, all that fun stuff. And if you like this video, tell all your friends. Leave a comment down below. And if you didn't like it, then just shut up. And I will see you next time.